Hey guys, Greg Seck here. Well, today coming straight at you from the trading den is the most used and abused Forex indicator, and that is the Stochastic Oscillator. Now, the Stochastic Oscillator is critically important and measures the momentum. That's the speed and price range movement of price. So if you don't know what makes the indicator itself go up and down, then you must watch this video. Two deadly mistakes to avoid when using the Stochastic Oscillator are, number one, don't blindly go short when it's overbought and go long when it's oversold, and then wonder why your trading account is bleeding consistently. Secondly, don't think the market will reverse just because you spot a divergence. So we're going to cover divergences. We're also going to cover uh, the usage of the indicator, and we're going to use the Stochastic Oscillator to predict market turning points in a pullback. So you may remember me on other videos talking about what pullbacks are, and I may have talked about the concept of phase one, which is price moving with the trend, and then pulling back, which is phase two. So a pullback really is a counter trend movement. You can use this oscillator indicator to time when a pullback will end. So say markets rallied, then it's pulled back. When that pullback ends and it's then resuming again phase one back into the trend, this oscillator will certainly help the timing of that indicator, certainly the timing of that move. Now, if the price is above the 200 period moving average, then you should have a long bias. You're looking for long setups and also when the stochastic itself is oversold. So you want price to be above the 200 period moving average. You want the indicator itself, the, the stochastics oscillator, to be underneath the 20 and breaking up through the 20. Now, if the price is below the 200 moving average on the chart, then we're looking for short setups when the stochastic oscillator itself is overbought. In other words, gone through the 80% zone and now crossing back down through. Now, we use this to filter for high probability trading setups using the oscillator itself. And we determine whether it should be long or short. And we do this by comparing it to the higher time frame trend. So we don't just trade in oscillation or in an isolation, should I say. We look, say, if we're using an hourly chart, which I'm now going to show you on the Aussie dollar, we will then look at the higher time frame. In this case, it would be the four hour, most importantly, the daily chart. If you're an hourly, most uh, successful traders today are using hourly charts and they're using the daily chart to give them that higher time frame trend. Now, if the higher time frame trend agrees with the current time frame trend, that's going to give you much greater certainty. And most traders use indicators and they forget all about looking at the big picture. Big mistake, don't do that. Yes, you're using this for timing. Yes, you're using it to confirm to you the end of a pullback. Yes, you're using it with the 80% and the 20% zone to tell you when it's, over, when it's oversold, when it's overbought, and then when the lines cross back through and back down. Yes, that's giving you entry. But if you do that in isolation, and you forget to look at the higher time frame trend, you're going to get yourself really unstuck. So don't forget to do that. That's an important rule number one. OK, so now I've just said all of that and I've pointed to mystical places in space without really teaching you how this works. Now let's put that into context, because me telling you if it breaks up through the 20 percent area or down through the 80 percent, really difficult to see without looking at a chart. So let's jump now straight into smart charts. So I can put this into context and hopefully this will make sense. So looking at smart charts right now, we're looking at the Aussie dollar and we're looking, if you look at the right hand side of the screen, H1 indicates an hourly chart, meaning every bar on the chart is 60 minutes in length. Now, you'll see below that price data, I've pulled up the stochastic oscillator. You'll see the settings are 14, 3 and 3, and it's on simple moving average. They are the standard settings, and that is consistent with the program. That's consistent with most traders when they're using this oscillator. You can change the settings. I suggest not doing that. 14, 3 and 3 is absolutely perfect. Now, what I've also done is I've put a dotted yellow line and I've colored the line dot or I've colored it yellow and made it dotted just to draw attention to it. This isn't the standard color configuration of a 200 exponential period moving average, but I've done it just to kind of draw your eye to it because I want to see if you've listened to what I've said so far and are going to follow along with my next piece. And my next piece is this. When should I be going long? When should I be going short? Well, you'll notice if you look at the bottom part of the screen, I'm going to stretch this up. This is the stochastic oscillator. And what I've said is that this is the overbought zone. OK, it's overbought. And then when it breaks through this 80% line here and then crashes down, this is our short signal. 
And then when it breaks, now we're in the oversold zone down here, which is the 20% line. If you look here to the far right hand side, it'll say 20. If you look over here, it says 80. Then when we look for an indication when it breaks up, through the 20% line, that's our buying signal. And there's really little discretion here. This is literally do what it says. However, let's put it into context regarding what I just said prior, which is about looking at the time frame above. So in this case, we're looking at the daily chart, sorry, the hourly chart. We should look now at the daily chart to give us that big picture. Because if you consider, right, market here is above the yellow line, above the 200 line here, I should be looking for long setups. There's a reason why that would not be the case or why that would be a big mistake. You could certainly say, well, look, I see the market has broken, just gone through the 20 down here and it's therefore oversold and breaking up and I'm above the, uh, the, the 200 line here on the chart, I should buy. My answer to that question is absolutely no. And the reason for that is because the trader, and this always happens when people get very tunnel focused, when they get very tunnel vision and they're looking at an indicator, they're looking at a, a moving average line and they're looking at a currency pair on an hourly chart, they forget the biggest sin of all, which is to look at the higher time frame. Now let's do that. So if I now jump from the hourly chart, the reason we wouldn't be going long here is because we failed, or the reason we are not going long here is because we haven't failed to look at the daily chart, which we're going to do right now. So now I look at the daily chart. Now what does the daily chart tell me is happening? Well, clearly Aussie dollar, as we well know, has been in the downtrend pretty significantly for the last year. And you can see certainly if I sort of stretch pricing data to more recent pricing data, we certainly are under the 200 moving average of the daily, we're in a downtrend. So clearly the only positions we should be taking, which are consistent with the overall prevailing big picture, are short positions. So if I now jump back to my uh, hourly chart, and you'll notice that I could be tempted to take long positions here. The probability of these working out has the wind against me. I want the wind in my favor. I want a tailwind. I certainly don't want a headwind. This would be a major headwind from the daily chart. I'm looking for a tailwind to jump on the back of and get myself into a profitable situation as quickly as possible. The way to do that is to recognize, well, what direction should we be having? Where's our bias? And our bias is not just dictated by this hourly chart. It's by the big picture. And the big picture says, you should be going short. Now we look at the chart and we say, okay, well, right now I should not be buying Aussie dollar because it's inconsistent with the daily chart picture. So when should I be going short and when should I be going long? Well, consider this period of time here. Let's just focus on this period of time here because first of all, my price, is it below the 200 average? Yes, it is. Great. What is my short signal? My short signal is when it's in the overbought zone, which is above the 80%, and then when it breaks down through the 80%. So this line here, where you can see the oscillator breaking through the 80% line, this is your short signal. In fact, right here as it breaks down through, if you now look up at the chart at the same place, in fact, why don't I draw a line in here? Uh, so I'm going to go trend line, I'm going to go horizontal, I'm not going to go horizontal, I'm going to go vertical line. And I'm going to take this point where it's broken through here, which would be consistent with this part here, I think that's fair to say. So that would be my short entry, because let's be clear, the daily says I'm short because it's below the 200 and it's in a downtrend, very clear trending downtrend over the last year even. The oscillator has broken down through the overbought zone and it's now breaking down. So it's got all the buyers that load in. Now the short sellers are in and we're breaking through the 80% line. And we now hold short until market then breaks into the oversold zone. That is our big move. And if I stretch this down and I move this up, you can see everything quite clearly, hopefully. And then as we now break up through clearly here, this would be your signal to then close that short position by buying the position back and taking the profit. Clearly, you're going short here. You're looking to make money when the market falls. So if I put another line in here, which shows you, uh, again, we're going to go trend line, we're going to go vertical line, and uh, my exit here is here. So let's just draw that on something like here there or thereabouts. Maybe I'm a little bit too far to the right, but something like that. So we'd then be looking to get a short entry. Now we could make this a bit more precise, but really there's little discretion. If you're going to use the stochastic oscillator as an indicator to enter positions. Now remember, this is at the end. I said before, this is to, to time the end of a pullback. So if you notice market, this is phase one. 
This is where the market's falling. This is phase two, which is that counter trend movement. Remember, we're in a downtrend at this particular time. So it's down. This is phase one, price moving with the trend. This is phase two, where the price is moving counter trend, which is here. And then this is the resumption of the market going back to phase one again, falling with the trend. And this oscillator is telling us, look, you should be entering here because this tells us that the counter trend movement, which is the phase two movement, this is phase one with the trend, this is phase two, this is phase one, this is phase two. So where phase two here has ended, which is exactly here, this is where we should be entering, again, where the market, where the oscillator, should I say, is broken down through the 80%. We then hold short until it breaks up through the 20% and between this position here and this position here is where our profit target is. Now, if we want to measure that in smart charts, just to give you an understanding or an indication as to how powerful a move that was, remember, you've got the daily. It's short. We're in a phase one move, the beginning of a phase one movement after, after that pullback has ended, which has been indicated by the oscillator. That's exactly how you use it. And then we hold that position till basically the, that, that phase one movement has finished. And we know it's finished when the indicator then breaks back up through that 20% line. So that actually allows you to clip that little phase one movement, that nice short movement, grab as much of the profit as possible in a downtrend, consistent with the overriding or the prevailing daily trend. So in other words, all your ducks are in a row, uh, and that is why the positions worked out well. You can certainly see that. Let's have a look at measuring it, just so you have an understanding of, uh, of what the, when these ducks all align, or when these stars all align, what kind of, um, what kind of pip uh, movement we can expect. And this one looks not too bad at all. Now look, maybe we wouldn't get all of the move. Let's just say we just got that much of the move. I, like, I, I hate to do a, an example or an educational piece where it says I'm going to get from the top to the bottom. Nobody times it that perfectly. We all wish we could, but unfortunately we don't. Uh, but look, if I get that section of the move, I'm still getting 97 pips and I'm doing it in a relatively short space of time. I'm doing it in about a day. And that's an important realisation. You've got your daily, you've got your market trend on your hourly, you've got the resumption of that phase one movement, which means the pullback has, end, has ended by indicated by the stochastics oscillator, and you can see where the, where the time to exit the trade. So you're using the indicator to its best use. Now, we use the indicator to confirm our entry. That's very important. Unlike chart or candlestick patterns where the entry can be subjective, which as you know from position traders who, have sub, who, who place their decisions solely on price action, this indicator doesn't give you that problem. There is zero discretion here. You have a long bias, then you go long when the stochastic line crosses above the 20. If you have a short bias, then you go short when the stochastic line crosses down through the 80. That is how you use this indicator. Now, a quick search on the internet will tell you the best time to use the stochastics oscillator is in a ranging market to pinpoint the tops and bottoms of a range with deadly accuracy. But I call BS on that because here's the thing. Do you really want to use this indicator for that purpose? The answer is a clear no. You shouldn't be trying to trade like that anyway. People don't profit in ranging markets. I don't care how many videos there are on the internet. I don't care how many people sit there and tell you into a microphone that you can make money when the markets go up, down or sideways. Not true. Very difficult to make money in sideways markets. Why? There's very little market pressure. There's very little bias. Look how I've stacked this trade up. I've got daily trend. I've got hourly trend. I've got the end of the phase two movement moving back to phase one down again, timed perfectly with the oscillator. You've then got all your ducks in a row. Why would you take the risk of not having market bias in your favor? This game is all about trading the trend. And so the answer is clearly no. Don't use this indicator to trade ranging markets. Don't trade ranging markets. If you have to trade ranging markets, I would suggest you should pick a better sport like going to the pub or doing something more useful with your mates. Sitting there and trying to trade a market which has no bias is just adding more risk to the game and ultimately you're going to come unstuck. Now, why can moving average crossovers be used as a complement? Well, they can. We use moving average crossovers and they can help confirm trends which further indicate the decision you should be making. So all that being said, let me give you a quick recap. We use the Stochastics Oscillator as an entry tool. So it tells us, it tells us when a pullback has entered. That's really important. When a pullback has ended, so when a phase two movement ends, you always want to be trading the beginning of a phase one movement. Now, if you don't know what I mean when I say phase one or phase two, look on this YouTube channel. You'll find other videos around phase one and phase two. And if you haven't found the video on YouTube, grab yourself a copy of Smart Charts. 
uh, go to the education section and I clearly describe how to identify a phase one or a phase two move. Phase one basically means price moving consistent with the trend. We all know price moves up and moves down. Price, price moves with the trend, then it retraces and then it resumes. Okay, and it's that resumption of the price moving with the trend, which is when it moves from phase two to phase one, is where we want to be entering. The stochastic oscillator very helpfully helps us time that. And remember, trading is all about market timing uh, to perfection. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please hit like, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to get yourself access to my favorite trading platform, the one I use in every video, Smart Charts, click the link right in the description. Until then, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.